G'day folks. Oh, welcome to a nice little Tuesday afternoon. Things have been pretty busy, but I'm back out here uh, tinkering around again, and it's always good. Uh, don't mind the hum in the background, the heat pump's currently running, but the contactor is, well, <laughs> that's the old contactor, it just does that every now and then. Got old 50 hertz hum. Uh, yeah, what can I say, it's one of those nights, and I'm just looking at the uh, injection moulding machine. Well, I'm not going to be running it. It is not financially or economically viable to upgrade the power meter board. Again, it, I'm basically on a long-term lease here. They don't mind what I do, but I don't want to be upgrading the meter board on a place that's going to get bulldozed eventually. This is development property and yeah, I don't want to go to town placing everything on the meter board, which I would if I owned the place. I would have done so long ago. I would have just bought a bare chassis new from an electrical supplier and built my own panel and built it all up and just had an electrician throw it in and certify it and that would be it. Um, I would have done that a long time ago. But yeah, while it is a bit dodgy in there, as long as I don't push it too hard, it's not a hazard. The entire metre box is lined with thick, uh, it's not asbestos sheet, but it's um, fibro cement sheet. So if the uh, crappy old feeder wire does burn up, it's basically, it, the metre box is so well sealed and so well insulated, it's just going to snuff itself out. It'll starve itself of oxygen and go out. So that's not a big deal. It's not going to happen given the torture that I put it through in the past and a lot of those experiments are, well, in the past. I'm not going to try that sort of stuff again. But you know me, things do happen and we pull some amps at times and yeah. Anyway, I might just downgrade some of my circuit breakers out here just in case. <laughs> I'd rather have a breaker go off in here rather than a piece of feeder wire that's, well, I guess you'd say it's about four gauge, or well not gauge, but four millimetre square, maybe five mil square at the most, feeding the whole house. Not particularly good. It would have been alright in the 60s when this place was built, but yeah, not, not good now. So we're not going to see the old girl run, it's unfortunate. It's not even that old, it's only, it's only 13 years old. It's made in 2000. Um, but could be a good, it's definitely a good parts donor for things. We did try and sell it at work, I can't emphasise that enough. They did try, no one wanted it. It's a fairly specialised thing, horizontal injection moulding. Um, not just for over moulding cable plug ends, but any part you want to make, you basically got to be able to pick it out of the die manually and put it aside. It's not like a horizontal machine that you can pick up for like three or four grand for the Battenfeld equivalent, the same 350 series plus 350 horizontal machine which has the platens extending out over the chassis you can just put a plastic bin under it and collect parts all day long, you barely have to look at it you just top up the feeder and make sure everything's right and just empty the drop bin every now and then and they go on, they were going on greys online for about three and a half grand that's not much and that thing will just run automatically all day just punching out parts whether it's little plastic bits for cable clamps or in this case a, uh, a line clamp um, whatever whatever you want to make it'll just do it all day so yeah it's not economically viable in this country China's the biggest manufacturer of mold, molded plug ends and things like that like your computer IEC leads that sort of stuff your power supply lead for your computer the plug-ins on that would be moulded on a machine like this but they'd do it in China where they pay someone a dollar an hour to do it rather than in Australia where they've got to pay someone like $25 an hour to do it that's not economical unfortunately as much as I love employing uh, Australians and seeing Australian jobs paying someone even just $18 an hour or $16 an hour as a junior to sit in front of a machine like this and take it part out and put it in take it out that's way more expensive than you can get it done overseas. Unfortunate, very unfortunate, because I love Australian manufacturing, but 
I don't know, I don't think we'll be going back to the glory days of 1950s and 60s and that sort of thing. Anyway, enough rambling about that. Before I start disconnecting cables and things, I'm... I don't know, you might see a video of... You'll, well, you definitely see a video giving more details on the fundamentals of how this works and what it really is for. Not just what you've heard now, but sort of how it works, more importantly. That's why I got it. Not just because it's got some cool parts in it, but to explain how an injection molder works. I might even pay a visit to one of my old employers and see if I can film a machine in action, running. Running full auto or semi-auto, knocking out parts. It won't be a vertical, but it'll be the same principle in horizontal. And they're the best ones. I like horizontal machines because you can just set them auto and they'll knock out bottle caps or plug-in cut caps or louvers for vents or whatever. They'll knock them out fully automatically all day long. You just got to keep feeding them and keep the drop bin clear or at least empty enough that they don't end up all over the floor. So yeah, it's a shame. It's a good machine. Battenfeld are probably one of the, I guess you'd be call it like the Porsche of injection molding machines. There are a lot of brands and makers out there. There's certainly a lot of cheap ones now like uh, the Chinese manufactured ones, but yeah, being a decent Austrian made machine, this is probably like a Porsche or a, a, a Ferrari of, of injection molding machines. I know they cost a hell of a lot more than the cheap Asian made uh, equivalents. But yeah, look at that valve block. That valve block spans from this side of the machine all the way to the other. And it appears to be one solid machined lump of steel. So that's going to be an interesting teardown. Mind you, I'm not sure if that's interchangeable with the horizontal version. I could check that one first before I butcher it. Because some of these parts might be worth a shitload of money on eBay to somebody who has the horizontal version. I know the command console probably will. I'll, look, I'll definitely look into that. If I can sell this Unilog control console and rack and everything, I mean, I don't really even need most of the contactors, but... I mean, even just the card rack and the control panel itself, I can imagine that would be worth a fair bit of money to the right person. I imagine the control cards are programmed for this particular machine, but just that pad alone, there are no breaks in this uh, outer layer, the membrane layer on the outside. It's not scratched up or mangled or damaged. It's been cared for pretty well. So there are some pretty good bits in here. They could well and truly finance an upcoming project which involves electric motors and cars, or more importantly, that electric motor and cars. <laughs> 10 horsepower. Doesn't sound like much in car terms, but as uh, I think Alex was saying, you crank the VF curve up to 300% torque at virtually zero RPM, and that thing will turn a car like the Nissan Micra into a ballistic missile. Hell, I could even pull the tired old engine out of uh, little Betty here, the RAV4, and uh, still 10 horsepower electric AC electric motor in the RAV4, that's a pretty decent little drive. Not the longest of range, and I definitely have to buy some uh, nickel, nickel metal high drive batteries, but you'd be surprised what you can do with electric. Hybrids are a load of shit, don't get me started on hybrids, but Pure electric, especially if you can power it off or charge it off grid using a waste oil powered diesel generator or hydroelectric generator or solar power, something like that. Completely off grid, you're not paying the power company, you're not paying the, f the fuel suppliers. That's doable and that's pretty cool. I ain't doing stuff to save the earth, but I like it because it's cool. <laughs> especially a car that sounds like a laboured three phase motor winding up. You can just imagine the sound of that. <laughs> I do like the sound of a three-phase motor spooling up. Just as much as I do a turbocharger or a big diesel V8. Anyway, enough rambling. This machine's coming apart. You're not going to see it running. I'm sorry, but I did the best I could. It's been here far too long and I want to get my turbine jet engine back in here. Not the big one, not, well, not a big one, but the turbocharger jet engine. I haven't picked up a proper turbine jet engine yet. <laughs> one will show up one day. I am getting something from an aircraft very soon. 
but it's not a actual engine. It's something that monitor. Well, it's part of the monitoring system for the engines, and we'll pull that to bits. We'll have a look at it. Anyway, thanks for watching.